Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by Camroom5. In today's video, we're going to be talking about hybridization. It's a totally new topic. And one thing we need to know is that hybridization occurs before a bond is made. Let's use carbon as an example with a configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2px1, 2py1, 2pz0. Carbon goes into the excited state and makes the s electron unpaired and transfers the electron from the s orbital to the z orbital. Now all four have one unpaired electron in these four orbitals. They want to make bonds with hydrogen if they want to make a methane molecule, which is CH4. So carbon has one s orbital, which can make a bond, a py orbital, a px orbital, and a pz orbital. Three are p orbitals with 90 degree angle between them and one is the s orbital which is spherical. That means that three bonds would be different and the fourth would be different. That is not the case. Actually what happens is that carbon uses all these four orbitals to make hybrid orbitals. The atomic orbitals of this carbon atom combine and make a new kind of orbital. They produce a new kind of a new set of hybrid orbitals where the s orbital and the p orbitals are all combined to make something new. This happens before the chemical bond is made. The hybrid orbitals will have the same shape. You won't be able to tell the difference in their shapes. They will have the same energy and the same kind of capacities in chemical bonding. They're going to be in sa same in number. So for example, if you're using one s orbital and three of the p ones, total would be four orbitals. So they are same in numbers as the combining ones. You have s orbital and three p orbitals. So the resultant would be four hybrid orbitals and we call them sp3. I'm pretty sure you can guess why we are naming them sp3 because there is one s orbital and three p orbitals. Let us, let's explore this idea even further. What is sp3 hybridization? So when we talk about that, let's recall that carbon had four orbitals, the s orbital, the px, py, and pz. Totally, we are getting four hybrid orbitals after the phenomenon of hybridization. Since out of these four, one is s orbital, so the s character is 25%. The product, the product hybrid orbitals would have 25% s characteristics, and they will have almost three fourth or 75% characteristics of a p orbital. And these orbitals all look in a similar shape. They have this kind of shape which is made by the combination of S characters and P characters. They are all exactly apart. And we know that when four orbitals are apart, they are 109.5 degree angle apart from each other. Now they are making bond with the hydrogen orbital. They are making an overlap with the hydrogen atom. So the sp3 orbitals of the carbon atom are making an overlap with the hydrogen atom orbital. All these hybrid orbitals are exactly 109.5 degree apart from each other at the corners of a tetrahedron. They look something like this schematically where they're forming a structure known as the tetrahedral structure. We already know that a tetrahedral structure is a 3D structure. It's not a 2D one. Let's recall the other kind of hybridization, which is SP2 hybridization. I'm pretty sure you have figured out that it's made by using one of the s orbitals and two of p orbitals. The third p orbital remains unhybrid. It does not participate in the hybridization process. So we have three combined orbitals. As a result, we are, get, we are getting three combined hybrid orbitals. So the total hybrid orbitals in this sp2 hybridization is three. These three hybrid orbitals are each called the sp2 one. They have one out of three, or that is 33.3% characteristics of s orbital, and two out of three, 
or you can say 66.7% characteristics of a p orbital. Let's go back to the carbon atoms configuration and now the orange ones. The s orbital and the two of the p orbitals are making hybrid orbitals while pz remains unhybrid. It's not compulsory that pz is the one which is unhybrid. It could be py, it could be px. But finally we are getting three sp2 orbitals. One s orbital which was a spherical and three of the p orbitals which were tumble shaped on three different orientation axes. Now three of them are combining to get you three hybrid orbitals. They are planar. These three hybrid orbitals are each 120 degree apart from each other and they make a structure known as the trigonal planar structure. 120 degrees the angle between each of these hybrid orbitals and all these hybrid orbitals are planar. Pz obviously is not planar. Pz is unhybrid. It's not going to be a participant in the hybridization and it is going to make a pi bond. Hybrid orbitals can only make sigma bonds. So you have three hybrid orbitals. They're going to be making three sigma bonds. Imagine two carbon atoms with sp2 hybridization on each. They are going to combine and make a sigma bond using the sp2 hybrid orbitals. The first sigma bond is made between two carbon atoms by using one hybrid orbital from each atom. The remaining two hybrid orbitals of each carbon atom are used to make bonds with hydrogen. You can count a total of five sigma bonds. Now hydrogen atoms are being overlapped by the remaining two sp2 hybrid orbitals. You have a total of five sigma bonds. What is the role of the unhybrid orbital which was the pz? It's going to be making a pi bond. The unhybrid pz orbital is making a pi bond while the hybrid orbitals are all on the same plane and they are making sigma bonds. One between the two carbon atoms and four with hydrogen atoms. The pz is making a pi bond where the electron density lies above and below the internuclear axis. We already know that pi bonds are a widely spreaded region of the electron density. Here, if we focus, these five sigma bonds are here and the one was pz's pi bond. The third category of hybridization is the sp hybridization. I am pretty sure you have figured out it is made by one s orbital and one p orbital only. The other two p orbitals do not participate in hybridization. As a result, you get only two sp hybrid orbitals. The remaining two p orbitals are not participating, so they can make pi bonds when they want. Like py and pz are not participating, they are unhybrid. So they are going to be making the pi bonds. You are getting two pi bonds, one by the py orbital and one through the pz orbital while the two sp hybrid orbitals are going to be making two sigma bonds. It's going to be having 50% s character and 50% character by the p orbital. Out of these four, the s orbital, px, py, and pz, only s and one of the p orbitals are going to be making hybrid orbitals. So two hybrid orbitals are made over here both are called sp. Obviously, they are in a linear structure with 180 degree angle apart from each other. The py and pz will make pi bonds. Imagine two carbon atoms with their sp hybrid orbitals, their py and the pz orbitals. The two sp orbitals combine to make a sigma bond with each other and the remaining sp orbitals make hydrogen, uh, a bond with hydrogen. Now what we are left with is a pi bond made by the pz orbitals. You can see the sigma bonds between the sp orbitals and sigma bonds with the hydrogen atoms. There is a pi bond formed by the pz orbital, while another pi bond is formed by the py orbitals, which is on the vertical plane. You have two pi bonds and a total of three sigma bonds. The hybrid orbitals are making the sigma bonds 
with hydrogen atoms and obviously with each other, while the purple shaded region and the blue shaded region represents the pi bond made by the unhybrid Py and Pz orbital. So we know so far that hybridization occurs before bonding, hybrid orbitals only make sigma bonds, and unhybrid orbitals can make pi bonds depending on the requirement of the atom. I hope this idea is clear to us.